In this episode of Truth Uncoiled, we are talking about the Stampin' Up! murders. This is regarding the the murder of Jared Brydgan. And this hits close to home because this is has a lot of ties to Utah. And when, you know, I got a lot of people that asked me to do vid- a video on this. And it was then that I started like reading about it and looking at it and just thought, wow, this is crazy and this is sad and this just goes to my theory like you cannot get away with murder in this day and age with everything that is going on now getting away with murder is almost impossible the only way it's going to happen is if you you create enough doubt that you go to trial and the jury decides not to convict but in this case the evidence is just overwhelming and the reason why this case is so heartbreaking is the children of jared brightgan are now left without a dad because he was murdered and they left without a dad, without a uh, mom because she was arrested for his murder. So let's talk about this a little bit. Jared Brigan and his ex-wife lived in Florida, but they had a very, what I would say, very contentious divorce in court all the time. And so as a divorce attorney looking through that lens, I mean, you call it a high conflict divorce, um, they continually throwing accusations at each other. They were in and out of court so many times. I mean, I think the docket showed that there was like a hundred pleadings that were in play, um, you know, when they were going into court and they were making these accusations and it had just gone on for, you know, several years. I think they had been um, divorced about five years by the time Jared was murdered. So on February 16th, 2022 is when Jared went to dinner with his twin children and then their two and a half year old sister. They went to dinner and then he went and took his twin children to their mom's house, Shanna Gardner Fernandez. He dropped them off and then on his way home on this route that he always goes, he stopped because there was a tire in the middle of the road. He being the you know person that he is stopped because he was going to get out, get the tire and move it and was gunned down right then in front of his two and a half year old daughter sitting in the back seat. He was strapped into her car seat. And I mean, just the poor thing couldn't do anything about it. And I mean, he was shot several times. It was clearly that whoever shot him purposely did it to ensure that he was dead. And it wasn't long until after that, that they were able to figure out that Henry Tennant um, was the person who did it. He ended up confessing to it. He um, ended up pleading out to second degree murder. But the story unraveled because Henry then said, well, you know, I, I was paid to do this. And that's when the story just gets really deep because as I said, like Jared and Shanna had this like tumultuous divorce. They were both married again. And all of a sudden it, you know, was it more than just a random killing and everybody, including Jared's family believed that it was. And in fact, Jared's family has come out and said that they believe that um, Shanna or her husband had something to do it from the beginning. And it took almost a year before Shanna was arrested. But let's talk about what happened in that year. It It was just only a few months that her husband, her then husband, was arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. And in the legal scope of things, conspiracy to commit murder is is the same severity as you know, actually doing the murder. So he was charged and b- through that, they were able to get evidence and start collecting evidence um, through his phone and and records because it showed that they transferred money to this Henry Tennant and, and stuff. In the meantime, this is where the Stampin' Up! connection is because Shanna's parents here in Utah own Stampin' Up! And Stampin' Up! is like this big company that got really big through the 2000s because scrapbooking was a big deal and, and they had a lot of money. And after her husband was arrested, they picked up Shanna and those two kids and they moved them to Washington. In the meantime, they cut off all contact with Shanna, those two kids from Jared Bragan's um, family, like his parents. So grandma, grandpa, the new wife. So stepmom, that is an ongoing fight. And unfortunately, Jared's family doesn't have a lot of money. And so they don't have the money to fight this. And they moved to Washington. And in the meantime, they moved to Washington. The family didn't really think they had a leg to stand on because, you know, Shanna is the mom. She has the right to determine if who gets to see these children. And she was just denying it. But then it was like a year later 
that Shanna was finally implicated, indicted, and extradited back to Florida. And those kids now have jurisdiction in Washington. And so that's the state that is dealing with the whole grandparents' right or custody because Shanna's grandparents, the Stampin' Up! owners, were the ones that went to Washington. They, they kept the kids there and they basically took custody of those children. So these kids lost their dad. Their mom's now in jail awaiting a trial. Lost their stepdad. He's in jail waiting for a trial. But then they lost their stepmom because the grandparents are refusing any contact. Lost their half siblings. I mean, lost a whole half of the family. And then has this, the Shanna's family, like saying that they're protecting him and they're doing under protection, but really just alienating these children away from everything. I mean, I can't imagine the, the trauma that these these kids have and the fact that they just don't understand what's going on. I'm sure the grandparents haven't told them the truth. I mean, the case in Florida is just going really, really slow with um, Shanna and her husband. They The last thing we heard in the news was in April of 2024, there was some motions um, being set about moving the case out of the county that they were at because they were saying that they weren't going to get a fair trial and the Florida judge agreed to that. So they had to move, but there hasn't been a trial date set. There hasn't been, you know, more movement to that. And when I did a story on this, it was what the the family dynamic is really what, what shook me because I got so many people um, sending, you know, information about this. And that was what I believe really makes this story sad and tragic is the, the way that this family has just completely cut off the other side of the family. And Shanna's argument is going to be, she didn't know about it. She had nothing to do with it. This was all her husband. She's innocent. But, you know, there's a lot of um, evidence to show like all the payments to this Henry Tennant came from their joint bank account that Sh Shanna had access to. Her parents gave her money every month and it helped, you know, fight her legal fees and it helped continue to fight Jared. I mean, just and she, she was very enabled. And then, you know, these grandparents bought this house in Washington and helped her flee. So just a lot of information that came out about this situation that was more than what is being reported on the news. And obviously, Jared's family just wants um, justice for him and wants the people involved. Now, the person that actually murdered him is in jail, fled out to second degree, will be in jail. He, he's older, probably will never get out of prison. Um, but now it's going to all eyes are turning now to what Shanna's husband and what her are going to get. And obviously her Jared's family just wholeheartedly believes that they were both in on it. And again, it goes to the point that um, can you get away with murder? And in this situation, um, the evidence is pretty stark. It's pretty overwhelming to show that Shanna and her ex-husband knew about it or should have known about it. I mean, that's going to be, I think, the prosecutor's argument is that even if Shannon did not know about it, she should have known about it. She There was a, overwhelming evidence to show that she should have known, she could have known. So um, her claiming, I just didn't know, is going to be a weak argument. At least that's in the prosecutors. They are both being charged with capital murder. And if convicted, you know, it could be a big deal. So th then the second story of what's going on with these kids, and obviously, like, they're in Washington. I know that the family is trying to figure out what to do. Um, it's Washington state's family law and grandparents' rights is very hard. Um, and so there's going to, it's, it's hard and it costs a lot of money and you need an attorney that's specific to that county. I mean, it's just, it's really hard. And I just know that they're having a really hard time being able to find somebody to represent them and do it well. And then, and then to fight for these children. And, and that's where I think the biggest shame, you know, the, the hardest part of this case goes is, is those kids. So that's the Stampin' Up! scandal. It clearly is not over yet. There's a lot more to come with this and it will be interesting when we're able to do an update with the actual trials and we're able to break that down as well. So make sure you follow my YouTube channel, like it, subscribe so that you can be up to date with all of the details and follow me at Jill Coyle on, on all social media platforms. Well, next week.